I feel great since I no longer have to deal with random floating red cubes that get in my way when I randomly roam around for no reason. Alright, that intro was fire. Alright, that was a that was a pretty funny intro. I, I thought it was good. It's like good but bad. But it was good and it, it's just good and bad, alright. I'm I'm going on a tangent here, let's just get straight into it. Alright, so making automatic and burst fire. It's actually very simple. Uh for automatic, we simply just have to, you know, create a time float and subtract it by delta time, check if it's less than or equal to zero, and then set it back up and shoot. And that and for burst we just use a coroutine and a boolean. So I'm gonna get into my gun script here. Alright, so I first wanna work on automatic fire. Alright, so Right off the bat, I know I'm going to need a float delay, so we're just going to do private float um, time before shooting. And I'm going to need to create another serialized field of our fire rate. And in the start method, we're going to set our time before shooting equivalent to 1 divided by our fire rate. So every time we increase our fire rate, the time before shooting will become smaller and smaller making it th thus making it faster so now that is set up all i have to do is change this here to get mouse button so that uh this checks if we're holding down mouse one and do a simple check here if time before shooting is less than or equal to zero then we're going to shoot our weapon we're going to cast the ray if it isn't then we simply subtract time before shooting by time dot delta time. And a small problem with this is when we're shooting, right? Uh, when we tap fire, when we want to tap fire, we may not even shoot. It, that is because our time before shooting variable is greater than zero. So if our mouse button is not being held down, so if we just put else here, because we don't want to run this every frame. We're going to simply set our time before shooting equivalent to zero. And in our time before shooting, in this if statement, we're going to reset our time before shooting. So basically what happens is, if we simply click mouse one, then we're going to shoot. We're going to shoot it and it's going to reset the time just in case we hold down the mouse. So now, if we go back into our game, and we hit play, and we just bring this game window up, we can tap fire, but we can also automatic burst. We just set up the fire rate first. Just gotta set that up. Uh, let's do a fire rate of five. Fire rate of five. So I can tap, and I can also automatic fire. Tap. So this is me tapping. There. And now we can help Billy destroy all of these random cubes that appeared out of nowhere. Alright, and now all the cubes have been eliminated. Okay, so now let's work on burst fire. So, we're going to save this code right here, our automatic fire code, because we will put this in for when we want to switch our fire modes. So I can just control X it and put this here. I'm also going to just use this logic again. So I'm going to put this in our update method and put that back. So, for burst fire... Uh, we're going to be using an IE numerator. So we're going to create an IE numerator and call this burst shots. And this will take an, an, an index, int uh, times to shoot. So what we're going to do, it's simple, int i is equal to 0 or 1, since there's going to be one shot, then i is less than or equal to the times to shoot. Uh, this is generally the same as in i is equal to 0, and i is less than times to shoot, but I kind of like to do i equals 1, and i is less than or equal to times to shoot, since it kind of, um, it's more or less realistic on the number of times we shot, so do increment it. We're not really going to use this variable, this is mainly just to loop, so we're just going to do times shot, make this, more, make this more comprehensible. 
All right. And what we're going to take in here is our fire rate. Take our fire rate. And what we're going to do is yield return new wait for seconds. Let's do, yeah, wait for seconds. One divided by our fire rate. So it's going to shoot a number of bullets as fast as our fire rate. So like, like, bleh, like that. <laughs> it's okay. So, and we can just take in our code here, our shooting code and put it in here. Now, since we don't want multiple I enumerators to be um, shooting at once, what we're going to do is we're going to create a bool up here. We're going to create a private bool private bool and call this shooting and whenever the enumerator is running the i enumerator we're going to keep shooting to true and when it finishes we're going to set it to false so in our if statement we're going to do if get mouse button down our left click and shooting is equal to false so we can put a exclamation point at the back there so if it's not shooting and we left click then we're going to start our burst shots coroutine and let's just use the traditional three shot burst. So let's do start coroutine. And for our times to shoot, we're going to put in three. And we're going to set shooting to true right after. Shooting equals true. And there, that's, that's, this is burst fire. So now if we go back into Unity and we go to Billy, set up his fire rate. Okay, five, that's pretty good. And we go back into the game. We can now notice that when I click once, it shoots three bullets. And we can make this faster. Let's let's give it a fire rate of 12. And now Billy can take out the cubes once again with his new fire mode. All right, and there, once again, the cubes have been eliminated. Okay, now let's work on switching the fire rates. So. We can easily do this with, by using an enum. And we can create a public enum and let's call this our firing modes. And in here we're gonna have semi, auto, and burst. And what we're going to do is we're gonna create a private I enumerator, or actually make it serialized. A serialized private I um, enum, sorry, a firing mode. And we're gonna call this um, current firing mode and we could put a space between variables like this a space a space like that so we can make our variables look a bit cleaner like we can separate these variables here and all right so and we can just have this default to firing modes dot let's have it default to auto and now what we're going to do we're going to separate our auto and semi functions in different functions so it's easier to read in our update method. So I'm going to do that real quick. Okay, so here you can see I have the different firing mode functionalities in their own functions. So this is what the burst code looks like and this is what the burst I enumerator looks like. Uh, this is, here's what the auto looks like, you know, our automatic firing code right here. And this is what our semi looks like. It's what we had in part one. So now, how can we have our script check for multiple branch uh, conditions? So normally, if you're like a beginner in coding in C Sharp, then you'd probably use like a an if else if else if um, chain. But I'm not really a big fan of that as it can get really like really like it doesn't feel clean, and there could be some optimi optimization issues with that. So we're gonna be using a switch case statement. So we're gonna do switch current firing mode and we're gonna do case for all the different um, firing, uh, like all the different firing styles, <laughs> all the firing modes like burst, auto, and semi. And case firing modes dot semi. Okay, and now inside of each of these, we're going to call the function respective to their names. So we're gonna call the auto function under automatic right here, semi in semi and burst within burst. There you go. And 
yeah, this is how to create multiple firing modes. Now, how do we switch between them? So this is also fairly easy. So up here, right? If you hover over your um, different enums, you can see how they, e they are equivalent to an integer. Semi equals zero, auto is one, and burst is two. So I'm gonna mainly assign these to like one, two, and three, so I can have this easier to read for myself. And before we run any function, we're gonna do if input dot get key down, and I'm just gonna say a uh, f my f key, or yeah my v key actually. This I'm kind of used to that. My v key, and we're going to increment an integer, or we're gonna increase our current firing mode. So we're gonna do uh, actually create an integer here. So do private int fire mode id, and we're gonna increment this and we're going to check if our firing mode id is greater than three then we're going to set our fire mode id to one and once we're done with our little conditions here so i'm going to set that to one by default and we're going to assign our current firing mode so we're going to do current firing mode equals and we can cast our integer into our enum because we assigned integer values to our different firing modes in our enum. So we can put two parentheses here and put firing modes. And there you go. We can now cycle through our firing modes. And just to debug, we can do, actually, no, never mind. The, the, the property is actually serialized. So we can actually see it happen. All right, so now let's go into our game and let's go onto our gun and set a current firing mode to auto. If we hit play, and now if we press the V key, it goes to burst, semi, auto. So we're in auto now, and we're now in burst. There, and we go back to semi. Jitter click. Okay, so yeah, that is all for this tutorial. Uh, like and subscribe if you learned something new, and I'll see you in the next series or tutorial video. Goodbye.